go. I'm pretty sure you are set. Yep. All right. I just want to make sure everyone can see my screen and hear me and we're all good. Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, hello. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here this week. I had to take a few days off. As you can tell, my voice is kind of gone, um, but we're going to press through today. I'm very excited to be here um, and talk about our our last of the millionaire marketing series for the email marketing 101 course. Um, and today we're talking about innovation, automation and integration. So I'm so excited to get that conversation going, but I wanna thank Magalie for stepping in last week and teaching an awesome class on testing. I actually spent some time watching the class to make sure that she hit on everything that I would have talked about. And to be honest, Magalie, what you hit on was way more detailed than where I was gonna go. So it kind of encouraged me to take this conversation a little deeper into the world of um, marketing. So I think you did a really great job and I'm so happy that you went through not only the importance of testing, but also the nuances of the pieces of testing that don't necessarily matter, like the open rate, like, yes, it matters in theory, but really we want to know what people are clicking on, what they enjoyed, which button color, whether the red or the green they liked. So I really was engaged in the class and it was really cool to be a student <laughs> um, so, so thank you. And um, also just the, the information was so rich. Um, so for today, as usual. Dominique, oh, yes. Dominique, I want to I wanna share something with you. Um, and the class didn't even know that I did this last week. And it was a weird, it was weird test that I did, but I actually ran a test of my own last week. Oh yeah. Um, with our email marketing. And, and it was a weird test. The test that I ran is something I didn't talk about. And it was, I didn't send our, our normal email. So I normally would send a weekly email and I my test was to see if not sending the email, how it impacted attendance at this particular event. Um, so- Nice, okay, so, I, so I let's that. take a second because I, I like to tell people I am whatever a whatever scientist if I'm really into it. Because for example, marketing, I'm really into it. So if you could tell us how many people are in the room right now 11 participants, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I don't know. I would take that data and I would go back and look at maybe some of our other videos. And I don't know if there's a way for you to see how many people were in the room at the... Yeah, I have the number that, and I'm still running a test today. So today, yeah. what, I, what I did this week instead of what I normally do, because I normally send our email every Monday. Last week, I didn't send it at all. This week, I waited until this morning to send it. Right. <laughs> so um, I'm still running some tests. And I'll keep you posted on there, but on that. I'm so excited to hear that. And I, I want to even commend you and like clap it up for you for taking the time to do a test because I think as business owners and CEOs, we just got to get comfortable with the fact that we are the boss, right? So in whatever way, however that shows up in your life. And if I could just take the last 30 seconds of our like five minutes before mindfulness, um, I want to talk about kind of um, the importance of taking care of yourself as a CEO, especially when you're running businesses during a pandemic. Um, this last Saturday was my birthday. So I was so excited to celebrate my special day as I've been talking about this whole kind of course. Um, it's a really special day for me and my father because it's his birthday as well. So I had been doing my own testing on my own social channels on my personal channels and my business channels, just to kind of see who was listening. And I realized more people were listening than I expected. And so when I made certain posts, whether they were engagement, whether it was part of my strategy, whether it was a real part of me being like, hey, I have a lot of work I'm doing, can y'all leave me alone? Or whether it was like me doing a performative piece um, something I was working on, people were watching and listening and it made people react. But more importantly, I was doing too many exper experiments at once. 
right? And I think Magali kind of talked about this briefly in the last class. You have to be very clear on what you're testing and when you're testing and who you're testing it on. And I think last week as a scientist, I felt like I was in control because I knew all the tests that I was running. I was communicating it to my team very clearly. I even had graphics and follow-ups because again, it's my birthday. There was a lot going on. I had class to prepare for. I had a lot of things going on, but I was the only one managing this whole battleship of tests. And at the end of the day, my family was like, you have too many tests going on. You need to take a break. And so thankfully I listened and I laid down for a few days and I let my voice come back and I let my, my blood pressure come back down and I let my mental health kind of lead the way. So I want to encourage everyone um, as we kind of continue this cadence of having a mindfulness moment after we've had our beverage and our snack or as we're getting it and getting ready for, for class. Like we literally have done this for four weeks. They say it takes 21 days to create a new habit. I wanna like commend everyone for kind of sticking with my plan even when I couldn't be here and recognizing that we deserve to have mindful moments. We deserve to think of ourselves and put ourselves first. And we also deserve just five minutes to catch up and acknowledge that we are implementing the things that we're learning from each other and that we have such a great network and support system in each other that we have to keep these conversations going. So Magali, thank you for your testament. I would like to testify. I had way too many social posts. I had way too many tests. I had way too many strategies going on at once. And my family was like, absolutely not. Like you're gonna take a break because we don't even understand what you're saying anymore. Like you're, you're speaking in riddles. So I wanna encourage everyone to remember your health and your wealth your health and wellness are your wealth. So invest in them and be proud to invest in them and take those mindful moments. Um, we have about two more minutes, but we can kind of go forward with the lesson because I kind of like the pace that we're going unless there's a question in the chat box or unless there's something we need to talk about. I don't see any questions, but you have a few birthday shout outs on both oh, Facebook and in the group. Uh, we have a few people telling you happy birthday. <laughs> thank you so much. I want everyone to know that I am a true Leo. So I celebrate from July 23rd to September 5th. And that's just the time frame that I decide to celebrate. So what that means is anything I do in that time, I say it's for my birthday. And that's it. I mean, I, I think some people make it more than that, but that just makes me happy. So happy birthday to everyone in me. Um, about this course. So this course, the objective is to help you to build your email marketing skills with a million dollar strategy that I use and implemented. I want to show you how digital marketing can help you and your business. I want to make sure that we are Understanding that even though we are at an introductory level or maybe different levels, that we can do the work that we're talking about in this class. We need to understand that our influence is way more than just our marketing strategy. It's also how we communicate as a business to our consumers. And then of course, I recommend that this class, we do the four hours, um, one hour a week or so of coursework and discussion. And I do recommend that you take an hour after class to kind of process the information and see what you can implement. Um, so a little bit about me, for those of you that don't know, I am a nationally ranked public speaker, a marketing and human resource strategist and author. My mission is to empower people with um, I'm sorry, empower people and businesses actually with data-driven tactics to help better serve their customers and to increase profit, right? Because we are here to increase our profit. Um, I have a few things about my experience telling you all the titles that I've had and the new one I've kind of given, um, I've achieved is publisher, which I'm very proud of. Um, and just to go straight into the lesson, I like to start with a staggering statistic or, or a nice number, um, some data. So more than a quarter 
of C-level executives that were surveyed in this report that I read um, said that they have designated an innovation leader as a chief innovation officer in their organization. Now, I wanted to show this statistic because I want everyone to see just how focused C-suite executives are on hiring somebody to be in charge of innovation, right? Because we need to understand that whether we're in a pandemic or not, our economy will stabilize at some point in some way. So we need to look at this time as opportunity for us to learn and stretch and grow. So as I learn and stretch and grow, I am doing my research and I, my magazine is too far to grab, but I love reading INC. And the one that I got last month is talking about, you know, things that CEOs are doing. And, um, you know, I know there's a lot that we can talk about in that space, but as people that own businesses, we understand that the leaders need to be doing the research and stretching themselves to grow the business. So, I think we can take this statistic and think of ourselves as C-level executives in our organizations and also realize that what we're doing today and what we have been doing the last few weeks is stepping up our innovation, right? And maybe you are not the chief innovative officer or chief innovation officer, but maybe you know someone that you can hire or maybe you can do some research to develop at least what that department would look like in your business right? So we're going to go straight into the lesson of really understanding technology, because that's what we're talking about when we say innovate, automate, integrate, right? We want to think about how we can innovate everything we're doing in our business. Keep it fresh. Keep it at the top of mind for whatever we do. Um, we also want to make sure that we make everything automatic if we can, right? Let's just be honest. As an aunt, um, as a woman in my 30s, as somebody who lives in Washington, DC, as whatever, somebody that likes fur, I don't like to waste my time. And if there's something that I can do that is automated in my business, I'm going to do it because it should be a convenience for me. So what does that mean? I need to research it. I need to know what it's going to do. I need to know how it connects to everything else. And I need to be able to make sure that the words that I put here will translate in all these other spaces, right? So that's literally how we make things automatic and lead it into the integration of the rest of our system, the rest of our funnel, okay? But I know that this is a heavy, these are heavy things to think about. So we're gonna talk about it in a very basic way, but I want, uh, I want this class to have a little more, maybe questions that are tactical that we can talk about because it's such a theoretical part of the course, right? So first we need to talk about what are the benefits of using technology to empower your marketing? Well, obviously, first of all, you have numbers, right? So you have proof, whether it's data sets, whether it's um, consumer reports, whether it's feedback from your staff, you now have created systems where technology is giving you data and numbers to help you be better informed. So when you think of technology-led strategy, mm -hmm. we need to think about how it empowers our businesses with data. I thought I put all my notifications on silent. I apologize. Um, we want to empower our business with the data that we use to create, track, test, and um, develop inclusive marketing for all of the channels that we speak to people in, right? So whether that's email, text message, Facebook, phone call, whatever, however you talk to your audience, your customers, your guests, your clients, your friends, your foes, whoever, we need to start making sure that our technology is supporting those channels, right? So 
once you make sure your technology is working, then you can engage your audience, you can sell to them, you can share with them, you can ask them for support, and you can be the CEO. You can be the person saying, okay, this is what we're talking about. And let's say you're not the CEO. I know there was a young lady in our class a few weeks ago that said it's her husband's landscaping business and she helps with some administrative things. Some might call her, um, she might be the chief operating officer. She might be, you know, there are different titles. That's fine. Whatever level you are, you are the chief of that level. So how are you executing your work and how is your team working with you and for you? So innovation marketing is one of the effective communication pillars I wanted to make sure that we talked about because this is a very futuristic marketing strategy and trend, if you will. This is something that marketing, marketing scientists like myself really enjoy and indulge ourselves in because it's like how we are planning to start marketing in the future. So when we think of innovation, mar innovation marketing, it is simply the implementation of new marketing methods that involved significant changes in the product design or packing, product placement, product promotion, or pricing. So this speaks specifically to what you are selling. Now, I want you to get out of the traditional mindset of, I, I provide a service. I don't sell a product. Whatever it is that you're selling, whatever it is that you're giving in exchange for money, that is your product, okay? Innovation marketing takes your product and thinks about the best futuristic way to promote it, to sell it, to talk about it. So as examples, some things people use to develop their innovation marketing strategy are research, data points, feedback, surveys. These are things that our customers have told us. So we can say that we use research from our customer needs to create concepts, prototypes, tests, and other things you need to find out from your customers in order to market a new product. So everything we've been talking about from our email system is how we apply our innovation marketing. It's really all the same. We're just using a different set of lenses to look at it. So now that we understand the basics of email marketing, we know how to do it. If we don't, the videos are on Facebook. We'll be sure to share it. We know how to test our audience. If you don't, we'll share the video again. We know how to test our actual emails. We know how to set metrics. Now we need to think about what we're gonna do next, okay? So in order to communicate effectively to all of our audiences, we have to make sure innovation is always a part of our strategy. If it is not, you are behind the curve and you're gonna lose money. And it's very, it's as simple as that. So let's think about ways that we have seen innovation marketing because we see it all the time. I mean, it's, it's fascinating if you really pay attention to it. One of the main things we've seen is virtual reality. I know that some of you have maybe seen, maybe some of your grandkids or, or people that are in the Gen X population enjoy those big kind of goggles and, they can go into this video experience. Well, a lot of organizations have started to use that technology as part of their marketing. So um, another kind of um, example is augmented reality. So unlike virtual reality, it's kind of like when you have an app on your phone, uh, when I saw recently was for nail polish. So you can take a picture of your nails and then in the app, you can change the color of the nail polish. So every time you look at the app and you're testing out, I think it was like some nail polish company that you could see the color against your hand. So that's an example of augment reality. And then we have what we call digital marketing, which is a combination of physical and digital marketing. So some people use like um, 3D printing 
or even some sometimes you can go on if you're a realtor for example you can do like virtual tours on your website um, even if you're a landscaper or I, I know we have some other businesses here that are kind of in the space of we do a lot of things for different people. So what we do is not cookie cutter, um, creating some type of virtual tour on your website is a way that you could incorporate innovation marketing strategies, right? Um, another kind of innovation that people don't really think about, which is um, more attainable, and I guess uh, doesn't require as many resources, is really thinking about the culture of your organization. Um, and I think we have to have these, what I like to call uh, challenging conversations, and we need to look at the pool of our organization, period. I mean, there's diversity in any shade, any hue, any color, but I think we need to push ourselves outside of ourselves and think, how can I innovate even more? How can I cross cultures even more? Now, I'm not saying that if you sell shaving cream for women, that you have to have a black man in the room because he might use shaving cream as well. But I am saying that. As much as we think our audience is who they are, our audience is also who they are not. Because you never know who you can convince that they need to purchase your shaving cream. Because that Black man has sisters. He has a wife. He has a friend. He has a cousin. He has a girl that maybe he overheard needed some shaving cream. So we have to look at the cultural significance of where we are and think about if we can improve it and how we can do so in a way that makes sense. I am not saying to change your board um, because then we run into spaces and places where marketing scientists like me will go and say, hey, Magali, I noticed that during the Black Lives Matter protests, you posted on your page 70 times that Black Lives Mattered, but then I looked at your board and I didn't see anyone Black. How do you answer that? And I'm sorry, everybody on this call, we shouldn't be silent in this type of, we are business owners. We should be able to say, you know what? We didn't realize that our board lacked that type of diversity. So we are figuring it out. And I think we're allowed to take a few weeks, months, maybe years to figure it out. But to sit here and, and not speak about it as part of innovation is a disservice. So I think there's a beautiful way that we can kind of make it work um, for all of us. So I think using cultural relevance is important, but not abusing it so that somebody can come back and say, wait a minute, there's something missing here, right? If you sell pens, there are so many people that use pens. Do those, are those people reflected in your strategy? If they're not, why not? And if they are, how can you get even more information from them, right? So that's when we start thinking about user-generated content. We need to ask the people that use our things, our products, our services, our websites, what they think. Remember earlier in our, our class, I was saying that I was doing all these tests and I wasn't telling anyone what I was doing. What happened was I kept getting user error questions or user questions or, hold on, wait a minute, we, we need to check, we need to make sure, are you okay? Are you practicing your voice lessons or are you on vocal rest? Because you said both in one day. Are you taking a nap or are you cooking a meal? Because you said both, you know? Um, you have to have an opportunity to receive that feedback and answer the questions. It doesn't matter if you have goals that you're trying to reach, if the people you're talking to can't keep up with you. So a way to not only listen, but also take what they say and use it for strategy, use it for good, is to understand that your user generated content 
needs to be a part of your strategy as well. Also, we need to figure out how we're going to get these feedback channels to us. I, I mean, I'm a business owner. I have so many things going on. How am I going to have time to talk to everyone and figure out what they want, what they didn't understand, what I need to explain when I don't even have time to cook dinner tonight, right? I'm ordering in. Well, then we need to continue to keep innovation at the forefront of our mind and think about things like chat bot. Um, a lot of the websites that we use currently, whether it's Wix or Squarespace or whichever you have, a lot of them offer add-ons and premium services like chat boxes, like um, some type of integration with a customer service uh, system or some type of, hey, we are not available right now. Send us a message and we'll get back to you. These are things that we can integrate into our businesses using the platforms that we're already using. Um, so it's a matter of either upgrading to a better package and or outsourcing, right? So we could use something like Fiverr or Upworks or maybe a virtual assistant or our little niece that always comes over because she loves our cookies and she needs something to do and she knows how to use the computer. Um, you know, maybe maybe think about ways to get, empower people to be a part of your business. Um, because remember, we're courting our customers, our supporters, and our friends. So people can serve different roles for us if we understand how we can ask and if we provide um, the right boundaries and protections for ourselves and our business, right? Like I have, there are plenty of things I want people to help me with, but because of how my businesses are set up, I need everyone to sign certain documents. That's not because I don't trust them. It's because the way my business is set up, I have to protect my assets. I also want to make sure that we talk about innovation in other ways, right? Like artificial intelligence, AI, what is this? I don't know. When I was a little girl, I remember watching The Twilight Zone with my mother. She was very, very much into sci-fi and, and um, just, you know, outer space and Star Trek and all those really cool things. And now I am 30 something years old and I absolutely love astrology. I love science. I love the idea that there are robots that we could talk to in our homes. I know that there are issues that we're working through, you know, that have to do with privacy and things like that. But as we work through it, I kind of feel like I'm living in the future of my childhood dreams. So I think about things that make our technology and our communication more innovative, right? So something like a 3D photograph. Absolutely, you should have one or two photos in your email. But what if you made one of them a 3D photo? And what does that mean? Well, there are many different types of 3D photos, many different types of 3D photos that correspond with your marketing platform. So there are things that you will have to figure out on your own based on your business, but consider using 3D photos or maybe video. People love video. So whether that's posting a video on your social channel and then in an email, taking a screenshot of the video and putting a play button on top of it so that it's an image in an email. And then you also put the words video with the hyperlink that takes you to that video. Then if you have the email settings to block images, you still get the hyperlink. But if you allow images, then you can click the hyperlink. You know, we have to, we have to innovate, Pat. We have to be flexible with privacy and we have to be flexible with the boundaries that are set from the systems that we use to protect us and to protect our audience. But let's just be innovative. Think about different things you can do. Um, maybe you don't share a picture in an email, but maybe you do share it on Facebook because you have that page and you've never posted anything. So maybe a picture of your, your grandchild helping you pack the candles that you sell um, would be just a nice engagement. You know, no, you're not selling anything, but you're showing that you're a family run organization um, and you understand the importance of videos. 
Um, and then another really innovative thing that we're looking at as, as forward thinking marketing scientists is social media artificial intelligence. So there are different robots and different, just different things that social media is, is allowing and providing for people, whether it be on TikTok or Instagram or all these other platforms. We just have to understand that there are innovations that are always happening. Um, and it's, it's good to kind of stay on top of it. So it's 101. This is when I like to do what I like to call a little coffee break. I get to sip a beverage, see if we have any questions um and just kind of check the temperature of the class to see if there's anything we have questions about or if we're ready to move forward yeah um so much good information so far we have i think there were two questions the first one was a general question about um getting access to the slides and i, I responded to the person but i want everybody else to know that we will share this presentation as well as all the other presentations um, via email. Um, if you want to see the video before we share it via email, you're welcome to visit Hustle Winston-Salem's Facebook page and go to the videos tab and you, you can find all of the sessions from this series there. Um, and then Dominique, there was a comment I wanted to share with, a few comments I wanted to share with you and then there's one question that I saw in the chat for you. You know, I like to share all positive comments. So the first comment that um, that was shared, um, someone said, you're gorgeous. Oh, thank I you. I wanted to share that because I was like, oh, isn't she a beauty? Um, and there was another comment when you were talking about, um, you know, whether you're selling, no, when you were talking about, um, people being the CEO of whatever role they're in. Um, I think that's when this response came through and someone someone just wanted to share that people, we, we need to con sometimes remind, remember that we are the product. So you are the product. Um, so I thought that that was a really excellent comment to share. And the question was how, and I think that was in response to, can you go to the previous slide real quick? I'm trying to remember what it, and you can jump in if you want to. Um, 3D. All those in response to 3D photos. So what is the question? How, how what? How do you use them? How do you integrate them? Okay. So it, what email platform are you using? How, how do you make a 3D photo? So I'm not sure, Carrie. And okay. I think, um, I think there are different ways so some iPhones have a feature that allows you to take a photo in a way where it looks 3D. But then I think on, for example, like Facebook, there's a way that you can post that same image and Facebook even makes it a little more 3D. Um, but I would say to a business owner, there are different websites where you can go to get images that are um, licensed for you to use them. So a lot of them, um, a lot of different platforms have free images you can use through them, or you can like go to a specific website. Yeah, um, I would add to that. Um, Facebook is the easiest way in my opinion because Facebook, it's set up for you to make a photo 3D and you can go to Facebook and follow the steps. It's pretty simple. They'll say, right. make this photo 3D and you can kind of save that and use it on other platforms. So you have a 3D photo. Yep. But also um, if you are skilled in this area, which I am not, you can always use, um, someone said you, you plash in the chat. Um, that's really good. I think I was going to recommend, I lost my train of thought. Um, I think iStock is one. Um, even if you have Canva, if you have a Canva account and you pay for your premium account, they have images that you can search. Um, and even Carrie, just, just looking oh, okay. at your background, if you wanted to test something on somebody's phone, and I, I can only speak to iPhone because I don't have an Android, but I believe Androids have the same capability. But if you take the picture on your iPhone, um, I have the 10. So 
So 10 or better. Um, let's say the butterflies right there. You could take a picture of those butterflies and do what Magli and I recommended and put it on Facebook and kind of play with it a little bit. And those are the things that you can test on your personal page that other people might see it and they might not, they might say, oh, I've, I've seen those butterflies in your house, Carrie. I love the butterflies. But, you know, that take that as an opportunity to play around and test and, and see how you can do what you can do. And also know that there's always a way that you can pay someone else to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like a filter. It's just like a, an addition to a static picture so that they're yep. not all the same. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And also note that in email, sometimes the email will not allow the the message to be delivered because you have to think of email as a letter and when we add all those special videos and 3d things and it just makes the letter heavier so then putting it in a mail slot gets harder so if you just think of it like that it doesn't mean that you can't have it on there it might just make the the mail the envelope a little too thick and based on how people protect their mailbox it might not get through um, I saw another question about what is C-level. Um, I hope that I can clarify that C-level is C-suite. So CEO, CFO, CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, Chief Operating Officer, Chief, that's just Chief. And I think that is everything for those questions. So, okay, let's keep it moving. Okay, so now let's think about building our automation system, right? Because now we've had an extensive conversation about innovation and how we have so many ways that we can innovate. Um, now, what do we do? We know 3D pictures, we know, ask our grandkids, we know sell shaving cream to men. How do we actually build the systems that we need to get where we need to go? Well, the first thing we need to do is understand how we're communicating with our audience currently. So how are you talking to them? Where, what channels, what does it look like? Are any of the automations, or excuse me, are any of the platforms that you talk to your people on, do any of the platforms have automations? So do they have anything that you can make automatic? Just start with that. Facebook absolutely has things you can make automatic. If you want to, let's say every Wednesday, you do a, a wacky Wednesday moment. And for your business, you sell cleaning supplies. So you sell window, you give window cleaner facts every Wednesday, wacky Wednesday window cleaner fact. Let's say every, you, let's say you write 17 facts in one hour while you're watching the Twilight Zone. Now you can go on Facebook, you can schedule all 17 facts for the next 17 Wednesdays. And now you know you have content scheduled for 17 Wednesdays. That is an automation. So we need to take time to survey, who are we talking to? Where are we talking to them? And on those platforms, what do they offer that we can get automated? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, we're tired. There's a lot that we do. So let's start at the ground level and let's see what we already have for free or what we can pay a few dollars more for and have peace of mind, right? So I also am a very big person for, is this something I can do myself or is this something I need to get someone else to do for me? Because most of the time we can watch a 10 or 15 minute tutorial or video and we can pick up on it and say oh when Dominique said make a wacky Wednesday post on Facebook I went to YouTube and I typed in how to create an automated Facebook post and then I let YouTube tell me because the video had 1 million hits so 1 million people have already looked at this video before me um, and I think we can give ourselves the power to, to do that and, and then say, you know, I really hate YouTube videos, so I'm not going to watch them. But my little niece always watches YouTube videos. Maybe I can have her watch this one for me and set it up. Um, 
and and maybe not niece, maybe assistant, maybe, you know, switch the name, but maybe somebody outside of you that has the bandwidth and the uh, je ne sais quoi, the like ambition. <laughs> Also, we need to think about our email platforms. Um, they definitely offer automations for simple things like subscriptions, newsletters, sales. So sometimes if you have MailChimp, I've heard a few people say that MailChimp will have like a free autoresponder. That might be what they call it. So whenever somebody comes to your website and they go to that little box where they put their email address in and they hit submit, there's an email that goes to them automatically when they do that. If you don't have that email customized, you need to talk to me so we can get in there, customize it. Maybe you put a little coupon in there. Maybe you put a little, hey, put your, put your link here. Um, or uh, if you wanna schedule time to speak to one of our experts, click here and do that. Or hey, thank you for joining our community. Just so you know, every Wednesday, we do a wacky Wednesday cleaner post on Facebook. Here's our Facebook page. Make sure you're following us here. Make sure you're liking us on Instagram and we wanna to talk to you every way, every day or not. Um, so look into your email platforms, see what's already there. Also know that we, we gave a few resources, every week we give a resource. So go back and check out the free trials. I have a few free trial coupons that I've um, integrated in a lot of the resources. So just try it for free. I tell people to put a, um, a calendar reminder in your phone two days before the trial is over so that you can kind of have that reminder to cancel. But you know, you, you can try and see what you like. Also make sure that you're using your audience data and analytics in a way that help you with your list building. So the first week that we had class, the first or second week we talked about list building and the importance of having your email list. Every time you learn something from your audience, it could create a new list, right? So let's say you have MailChimp and you wanted to send a newsletter like Magali said that she did, if I could use her example, Magali. Um, she said that normally she sends an email every week. And just to clarify, are you selling anything in the email? No, I am not. So you're only giving information. I'm providing information and resources, but I am wanting people to also register for our marketing outside the box. Okay. Yes, technically, yes. So technically, yes. And thank you for, for making that clarification. Even if you have an event that is free, it is a sale because those people have trusted you with their time and you've trusted them with yours. So I always tell people you need to make sure that every email communication you send, you can have a list that says, okay, in this week's email, and this is what Magali, I'm assuming you're going to test. In this week's email, we didn't send it. So normally people would go to the email we send and they might register and they might get to the, this course because they got the email and they registered through the email. But right now in the class, we have 16 participants. I think the most I've ever seen in the class was what, 26 maybe? Something like that. Yeah, Something 20. like that. Yeah. So we can probably safely assume that yes, Magali not sending the email had an effect on the rate of people in the room, but how much of an effect did it have? More importantly, did you get any money? Because if not, why are we spending so much time asking that question? Because really, Magali, what else are you selling that somebody would buy? And why isn't it in the email? And even if it's not in that email, why don't you have an automation set up that says, everyone that received this email, everyone that registered for this course, everyone that has attended all of these workshops, we're gonna send them a coupon code so that they can purchase uh, this cup that Dominique has been drinking from every class. We have to think outside of the box because people get paid like that and we can too. 
I want to, again, reiterate, use your audience data and analytics to create lists and email people automatically. You think of a sale, have somebody create a beautiful graphic, drop it in your email, use that same graphic on social media, talk about your sale, period. Infuse automation into all of your overall strategy, set metrics, test, and innovate. That is the secret sauce. I think if you wanna go a little further into understanding automation, understanding these new words that we're learning as CEOs or, or C-suites, let's, let's make it a little fun. Um, I like to have, I like to have what I call my automation wish list. What are the things that I wish I could have automatic in my business? Well, one of them is a welcome series, right? Let's say I am um, meeting new customers for the first time via email. I want to be able to say, hi, I'm Dominique. I sell marketing. I'm also really into cooking. So sometimes I might tell you a recipe. And then I want another email to say, hey, Carrie, I see you like butterflies. I love butterflies. I just saw this really butter beautiful butterfly. I think it was dying, but it was really beautiful. So I just let it you know, do its thing. Um, I think we have something in common with butterflies. I'd like to talk to you more. Here are some of the other things I talk about on my website. Email two of the welcome series. Email three. Oh, by the way, I realized you didn't respond to anything I said, which is fine. Um, I just want to know, are you interested in me talking to you or, or not? Because if you're not, it's cool. I can save money and I don't have to send you all these emails. We can create things like that that are automatic, that speak the language of our business, that speak the language of what we need. Another automation I want to have is a sales funnel. Oh my gosh, what is a sales funnel? It's a funnel where you sell. So you might start with something free, you might start with a coupon, you might start with something cheaper, and then you might say, oh yeah, by the way, I sent you all that cheaper free stuff, but now I'm telling you that I have an $8,000 product that I know that you really wanted, right? Let's make that automatic. Um, confirmations. Somebody has ordered from you, they purchased, everything is good to go, they're happy. You should send them a thank you. Thank you so much. Alan, for ordering our water bottle. Wow, now you get to stay hydrated. And let's tell, I wanna tell you something else. Not only do we have these water bottles, we have these straws, you're gonna need more, okay? And we have a few recipes for water enhancements that you can add to your water. Thanks for being our friend, right? Autoresponders, same thing. Hey, we see that you came to our website and you didn't buy anything. We want to just send you a coupon just for the heck of it. Trigger emails. Hey, you left something in your cart. You came to my website. You said you really liked something. You put it in your cart and then you didn't get it. I just want to remind you that you left something there. And let me just give you a little coupon to entice you. Uh, trip wires. So that's another thing in the, in the world of marketing that we have. Whenever you click on something and the little bug that connects to you online and follows everywhere you go and they say, Ooh, you went to the butterfly shop and then you went to the coffee shop and then you went to Magalie's marketing class. And then you searched for this reusable drinking glass. Okay. Now we're going to start sending you ads. Uh, dynamic content, which Magali touched on so graciously last week. Dynamic content is when you can take information from someone and make it appear dynamically in that, that communication. The easiest way to use dynamic content that I can think of off the top of my head is an email. An example of doing that is when you take somebody's location, for example, and you say in the email, hi, Alan. I see the weather in North Carolina is beautiful today. Having the ability to say whatever in whatever robot language or whatever the platform, asterisk, asterisk, star, star, weather, asterisk, asterisk, star, star, comma, regular copy. That is dynamic content. So being able to kind of take the information 
that you know based on the demographic and psychographic information you've already gotten from your audience, then you can create different scenarios where you're talking to them in a way that feels personal. So then you say, oh my gosh, I just got a text message from my local politician on a phone that I didn't give them my number for asking me who I was going to vote for this court, this election. So, you know, then you start to realize, wait a minute, I'm trapped in everybody's communication webs. So all we're going to do is figure out the webs, figure out how to make them work for us and build as we go. So as you're thinking of your automation wish list, and as you're thinking of, you know, being innovative and moving forward, you need to ask yourself, how can I make my operations and communication easier? That, that's all we're trying to do. So at the end of every class, and we have a little bit of time, um, I like to leave everyone with kind of like a homework assignment. And this one I called the innovation and integration assignment. Because I want you to first think about how you can communicate with better impact. So what are all of your communication channels? And where else can you share whatever your message is? So let's be bold. Let's be impactful. Let's say, hey, I'm the best window cleaner I know. That can be a fair statement. And you can say it boldly. But who are you saying it to? How are you saying it? And where else can you yell from the mountaintops what you do? We also need to analyze our technology. How are your platforms and programs connecting, right? It's not just about having that MailChimp. <laughs> Carrie, am I saying something to you that's like resonating? <laughs> but like really, like how are these things talking to each other? I was on a video the other day and I told her that I created a Twitter account and then I created a Facebook account and I created an Instagram account and none of them the same name. And she was like, I was like, how do you even know? Integration is like. And I mean, let's say your cleaning company is called Clean as a Whistle. And that's the company that the state said you could use because that's the name that was available. Then you go to Instagram and clean as a whistle is taken, clean as a whistle NC is taken, clean as a whistle one NC is taken, CNC W21. So then you have this, this, this conglomerate of a name and then you go to Twitter and then you go to Instagram. Listen, I get it. But what if I told you those names don't matter? What if I told you they don't matter? Because think about it, if you have a website, that's your, I think I made the analogy of your digital real estate being like a neighborhood. So your website is the street you live on. Um, and so you could have a house on your street, you could have a, a business on your street, you can have a golf course on your street, it's your street. So if your website is your street, how are you how are you connecting your website, the house, with the, the master bedroom, which might be your social media channel or whatever? You need to make sure that the links on the website connect to the right Instagram page. To me, that is more important than Suzy Q123 on every platform. I think there is a benefit to having a synergy in your naming convention. Absolutely. But if you've already started it, what are you supposed to do? Right? So I, I want you to know that you made the first step of creating the pages and that is so important. So kudos to you. Now, all you need to do is make sure that they talk to each other and they connect. One of the resources- I have links on the Wix website, but I don't have the money yet to host the website. So I've been building the website, but I did figure out like it, it was work but I figured out how to link so awesome. I was, YouTube. I love YouTube. And then once you figure it out, you realize, oh, wow, that was just one of 80 million steps. <laughs> but you feel so empowered, right? And I think you should let people know, hey, I connected my website with my social channel. And if you want to find me, you can find me here. And now that means you got to talk to people there because you built that house. You built that Twitter birdhouse. So not only do you need to see how do your platforms and programs connect, you also need to start thinking about the value of your operating systems and technology. Does it make sense for you to have a Twitter account? 
And if it does not make sense for you to have it, but you've already created it, what should you do? Should you delete the account or should you just say, well, I'll just post on it once a month to make sure I stay relevant. And then one day when my team gets big enough, I have someone to manage my Twitter pet, Twitter account. So I really think those are the questions you can ask yourself. And then I think we need to just have a more serious conversation about scaling our businesses. Can you afford to update your business expenses or your technology investments? I think sometimes we think it's more expensive than it is. And I think sometimes we have to understand that taking a risk is what is gonna, I'm sorry, my screen just, something just happened. Uh, sometimes analyzing your budget is not the same as taking a risk. And sometimes we need to just take that time to analyze our budget so that we can see if we can afford any updates. And then the real question, what is your marketing budget? That's what your teacher is asking. That's what I'm asking because you should have one, even if it's $10 a month. There's a lot you could do with $10 a month. And can you hire someone to help you? Whether that's somebody that you pay in meals, or hugs, or dollars, or resources, can you pay someone to help you? I wanna make sure that I give you a platform that I absolutely love. This is one of my favorite, favorite things to use. I tell every one of my clients and students to use it, and I've even included a link. Um, I can drop it in the chat group in a second, but it's um, called Later. And Later is a marketing platform for Instagram. That's how it started. But then it updated and integrated and Facebook bought Instagram and bought this, that, and the third. So now it all kind of works together. This is a free global marketing platform management software that has over 3 million users worldwide. And its users are top brands and agencies, influencers, all kinds of people. So Later is literally a platform that helps you schedule your social media posts. So once you have your picture, once you have your copy, once you have your hashtag, you go to Later, you put it in, you schedule it, and it posts it for you. Um, now, I know a lot of people that use this resource, and I know a lot of people that... Um, uh, use it in different ways. A lot of companies I know use it with a, they usually have somebody running it. So they have someone in charge of their social media. So they call that person a social media manager. So that social media manager would essentially take the social media copy and load it into the scheduler. And then you have automatic, every Wacky Wednesday post is scheduled. Um, so that is a resource. I'll drop it in the chat box. And I guess we have a few minutes, one minute for question and answer. Um, and if yeah. not. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dominique. Um, we do have a few questions um, for those that have to drop off because um, I know we're right at time. Thank you so much for joining us for this series. We will share everything with you. Um, and we hope that you can join us next month as well for our new series, which I am happy to share that Dominique will be back with us. She loves you all so much Yay. that she um, worked with, with uh, Hustle to um, come back for one more month for a new series. And we'll send an email with, uh, you'll receive an email both from Hustle and from the Foresight Tech Small Business Center as well as Flywheel. Um, so if you're connected to any of our networks, social media and all of that, you'll you'll see the details regarding the um, information. I'm really excited about the topic and it's gonna be revealed to you soon. Um, so uh, I'll answer all the questions that we see coming through. I'll, I'll kind of work from the beginning. Um, and if time allows, I also wanna share two quick things on my screen. Um, so the first question, uh, Dominique, let me make sure I'm in the right spot. Um, Carrie wanted you to know first that you have so many creative ideas. Um, and then Michael had a question that he wanted to know, what is the most direct email message or headline that would instantly convert to a sale? Ooh, um, Michael, that's a, a loaded question. Um, 
can I ask you a few more questions before I answer? And Michael, feel free to unmute yourself. Okay, sure, sure. Because I guess, I guess my question is, what are you selling? Um, an opportunity to get uh, transportation and housing without any rent, mortgage, car payments, or debt to pay. So that's way too long for a subject line, right? Right. So we got to think about what you're really selling. You're selling an opportunity. I heard that word. Right. And I also heard access to resources. No, what the opportunity is about is something that is new paradigm. The, each person gets a house and a car, truck, van, or SUV debt free. That's have it. You, have you looked at any other organizations that do the same thing? Uh, there, there are none. It's, it's never been done before. So I would argue that there are some organizations that give something away without asking anyone for anything in return. Not quite a gift because it involves uh, the masses and that no one is turned down. So if you can differentiate someone giving something remotely to a remote person as opposed to accommodating anyone who desires to have this package or product, no one turned down. I hear you, but with my tired ears, I'm I understand as a consumer, so it doesn't matter. Um, because I understand that you're trying to tell me that there's an opportunity for me to get something without yes. any debt. And right. It's a really good deal. Right. Absolutely. A house and a car. Simply. Okay. So I think a simple subject line could be something as simple as open this email to find out how to get a free house and car. Okay. Because if I got an email that said that, I would say, okay, this is spam. That's what I would say. This is spam because why would they tell me to open this email? But something in me would say, why would they tell me to open this email? I think I'm going to open it just to see what they're saying. That's, how, not how, that's not how everyone is going to interpret that subject line. But that's why we test subject lines. So you might be able to go to, once you start doing more email marketing and you start getting more data from your people, you might determine that the people in this part of the country that you speak to really like when you get really direct with them. They, they want you to say, open this email so I can tell you how to get a house and a car, debt-free, exclamation point. What about just the email with a uh, house and car, no debt, debt-free, no one turned down? I think that's a great subject line to test. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And what test. I want you to get comfortable with is testing, testing one, two, one, two. <laughs> yep. So I think you got in that moment maybe three subject lines. Yes. Yes. And and Thank you. think of subject lines not just for subject lines. Maybe it's the title of an article. Maybe it's a social post caption. You know? Right. Think of just think of them as words that you can use to clearly communicate to people. Yes. I hope that was helpful. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Um, you had another question and Carrie, you may need to jump in here. The question just says zero question mark. I'm not sure what that's a reference to. She was saying, are your platforms integrated? How many platforms do you have? That oh, <laughs> okay. Gotcha. I on it. <laughs> um, so there was another question. Um, someone asked you to please define psychographic. Um, as you were in, in the content of what you were speaking of. Sure. So when what I was saying was we need to look at our audience and the demographics and the psychographics of the information that we have, right? So demographics are the indicators that people use to self-identify, whether that's their name, their location, 
phone number, email address. Those are called demographics. Those are the things that tell you about the, um, the, the makeup of the person um, from a, like a, where they are, um, what they do kind of space. Psychographics are more what they believe, what they think. So we make assumptions about what people think and believe in marketing all the time. And we do it based on data. Um, and I, I tell people that's the only place that I allow people to have a little bit of bias because you kind of have to. You, it is safe to assume that people that live in Florida would purchase more sunblock than people that live in Oregon. It's safe to assume there's both there's sun in both places. We all know we all need sunblock, but we can make certain assumptions based on demographics like location and psychographics like, well, Florida has more surfers. Yeah. Um, or, you know, whatever other psychographic uh, indicators you can uh, come up with or take from the data. Cool. So I think we, if we can use the next three minutes. I mean, I hope that answered your question, Imani. Did it? I think that was a great response. Um, I, yes, I still have a private question. Um, do you yes, want to answer? Yes, ma'am. answer. Um, All right, perfect. I'll I'll defer to uh, Dominique, please. <laughs> um, you can. Uh, do you want to ask your private question before I jump into the last question that I saw? Oh yeah, it was just a question about my favorite meals to prepare from Linda. Yeah. I actually have um, a few quick meals that I like to prepare just because right now I just want things that are delicious and easy. So I've been making a salad, but I've really been focusing on the vinaigrette. So I take an old, like a vinaigrette that I have in my fridge, but I add like a little apple cider vinegar. I might add a little more like cayenne or maybe a little honey, just something else to enhance the dressing. And then I blend it in the blender. And sometimes I'll add like tahini paste just to give it a little bit of a different texture or feeling, or maybe even a little peanut butter. And then I put it on the salad. So that's like a really quick, simple recipe that I've been doing. Um, and then when I do peanut butter, sometimes I'll add like fresh fruit to the salad. So like apples or walnut. Like and you said that the videos were available on the Hustle Facebook page, right? So any that we've missed, we can go back and watch. Yeah, so um, let me address a few other questions before I ask my last question to Dominique. My bad, sorry. Other, no, 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 it's okay. The, 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 it's indirect to what you said. The, the few questions I want to address, yes, we you can find all the videos on the Hustle Facebook page. Go, go to the video tab. But also, if you've registered for any of the sessions in this series, we will email all of that information out to you at some point. You'll get all the presentations as well as the links to the Facebook videos. Um, so you will get that. Um, Linda, you asked, is this a series of workshops? So Marketing Outside the Box, we do it every week. Um, each month, we have a different series. So this particular one was a series on email marketing. But each month we do have a different series, but we hope that you can join us every month. Um, and there was a question asking me, what is Flywheel? And um, we actually have a representative of Flywheel on the call with us, but Flywheel is a co-working space here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Um, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful space. It's where Hustle's offices are located. Um, so they are one of our partners in this program and you can visit their website to learn more about them or we can talk offline if you wanna know more about Flywheel. And then the last question, uh, thank you all for hanging out um, before we, we end here and, and head out, unless Alan had questions on Facebook. Um, Dominique, I, I had expressed how I thought that wish list that you shared is so key and necessary. I didn't realize I needed it until I saw it. Um, but it made me really think as you talked about automations and I wanna share two real life examples of automations that I saw um, just in the last two weeks, I think. So one of them is I actually unsubscribed to one of the emails that I received, not because I want, not because I stopped being interested in the information, but I was signed up for their, their emails 
on with two different email accounts, right? On my end. So I am subscribed from one. And this was the automated, this was the automated response that I got. And do you know, even though I'm already subscribed with another email, I really wanted to resubscribe just because of their automated response. Um, it, it made me feel okay that I was removed, but I was just like, man, I kind of want to go back and support them just because they had this automated response ready for me to, to keep in touch. So I just kind of wanted to stress the importance of having something prepared like Dominique shared um, in that. And then the other one that I want to share, this, this happened just yesterday. Um, so I, I, I subscribed to one of the best lipsticks um, out there from this company called The Lip Bar by one of uh, Dominique and our sorority sisters. And they sent an email yesterday and I clicked the email to kind of look at the sale they had going on or whatever. And then I just kind of got busy and forgot to go back. And do you know, like maybe within 30 minutes, I got this email that said, thanks for stopping by. And I was like, oh yeah, I was on the website. I did forget. Um, and I think it was, it's so important what Dominique is saying about having automated responses to things. And it, it takes some time to set these up, but the value is unmatched because honestly, I think I would have forgotten that I wanted to go buy that, I, that I looked at this eyeliner and wanted to go buy this eyeliner. But because I got this, thanks for stopping by, babe, I was like, oh yeah, let me go do that. So I just kind of want to stress again the importance of some of those automations that Dominique was talking about. And, you know, in the beginning of today's presentation, she mentioned that some of them cost can kind of add these add-ons for some of those things. But when your budget is right, it is worth every penny if you know that you don't have the time to reply to each person that do these things. It is worth giving MailChimp or whatever platform that extra $5 onto your plan to have them do that. Because as we talk about the title of this series, once again, you're trying to, I don't know about you, but you're trying to get to a million dollars or more. You're trying to be at that C-suite level with your email marketing. And these are the small things that make the differences, that, that makes the difference. Companies Imagine. like the Lip Bar know that it's worth paying to have that response come to me because I, I went to the website. I'm sorry, go ahead, Dominique. I was going to say, if I could also respond, we are, I don't want to say it like this, but uh, one of my, my mom has said it to me in this way. We are victims of other people's marketing strategy all the time. Mm -hmm. So what makes you think that whatever you're selling is any different than what somebody else is? Yeah. And I say that in a way to honor what you do, but also to, you know, encourage you to have a little bit of humility and understand that what you're selling is not new and what you're selling is the story so if you don't have a good story and if you don't make it easy for people to send you money you're not going to sell yeah you just broke up a bit can you all hear me yeah okay. i hear it a little bit okay up, but i was i wasn't okay. i was done with what i was saying all right, great. I don't see any more questions and thank you all for hanging around a little bit. Uh, Imani, thank you. Dominique, he shared that you ladies are the bomb. Uh, thank you so thank much. You. <laughs> I, I think we did address all of the questions today. Um, we hope that you join us next week. I, I can. We're gonna talk about kind of how uh, virtual events and marketing merge. So you'll kind of see, you'll kind of see the topic and kind of see what we're talking about. We're excited and hopeful that you will return to us next week for the series next month. But um, just stay tuned for that information. And we hope that you have a great rest of your week. Um, in the information that we do send the follow up to this, we'll be sure to share links so you can connect with Dominique directly. If for some of you that may want to kind of further some of your marketing efforts, okay? Thanks again Thank so you. much. Thank you so much for having me this month, my birthday month. I hope you guys learned million dollar strategies. And if not, go back to all the videos and watch and um, you have my contact if you have any questions. Awesome. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Could we get that direct email Thank address you so much. on the chat?
Yes, I'll I'll put it in the chat again. Thank um, you. Um, okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a great, prosperous rest of the month, and you know, live your life like a Leo. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Before I end it, I want to make sure that Mike, you did grab that email address. Yes, I just back. took a picture of it. Thank you. All right. Thank perfect. You. All right. Well, we'll see you all next week. Thank you all. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Right. Thank you so much. Bye. Is that Alan? Thank you, yeah. Alan. Yeah, you take care.